Today's video is dedicated to my husband. He bought me this paint that is supposed to be the blackest black in the world, and I thought what better way to see how it works than with a Halloween video. To test how black this paint is, I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree skulls and I'm painting half with the black 3.0 by Culture Hustle and the other half in ink by Waverly. I started with the ink side so I could then compare the black 3.0 consistency since I already know how the Waverly chalk paint works. Then for the Culture Hustle side, you have to shake this paint really well to mix it up. I was not expecting the consistency of this paint to be so runny and so liquidy. So I got out one of my paint trays and poured some of the paint into that to make it a little bit easier. This paint is also incredibly thin. It's not a chalk paint, so I didn't expect it to be as thick as Waverly, but at least like an acrylic. The paint was almost separating away from the skull, so I wonder if I should have sanded it down a little bit first, but I ended up putting three coats on each side for a fair comparison. Here you can see the side by side and that Culture Hustle Black 3.0 really is the blackest black that I have ever seen. It also has a really velvety feel and is super matte, just like it claims. Now that we saw how dark this paint is, I painted the whole skull in the black 3.0 and I wanna add some gold leaf to bring out the details. I applied the adhesive with my detail paintbrush and let that get tacky for about 30 minutes. Then I applied my gold leaf flakes. It's going to look a little bit messy at first, but wait until you're completely done adding the gold leaf, then wipe off all of the excess gold leaf with a paintbrush. I made a few versions of this skull, including one with a Steeler logo on it since we are from Pittsburgh for my husband, and that's it for this one. This project is Pinterest inspired, my favorite place to get inspiration. I've had these pool noodles lying around in my craft room for quite a while now, and it's finally time to use them. I know pool noodles are hard to find this time of year, so you can also use toilet paper or paper towel rolls to get this same look. I cut the noodles down into various heights and ended up with 10 candle pieces. Then at first I held them together with rubber bands and started painting the pool noodles black, but then I realized it was easier to take all of them apart and paint individually, then put them back together using my super glue to hold them in place. Next, I'm taking my hot glue gun to create the wax strips from the candles. You wanna be really careful doing this because if the glue is too hot, it will melt the pool noodle foam. I ended up switching over to my low temp hot glue gun to prevent it from melting. And then it painted over all of the hot glue with my black paint again. Now I wanna put LED tea light candles into the tops of the pool noodles, so I cut out a hole big enough to fit them with my X-Acto knife. For the base where the candles are going to sit, I'm taking this Dollar Tree pizza pan and painting it in a custom purple color that I mixed up. I wanted to do a crackle effect with that purple peeking through, so next I'm taking my crackle medium to put on top of the purple paint. I don't know if it's this product in particular, but it did not crackle at all after I put the black paint on top of it. I even tried to use my heat gun for more of that crackle look. It looks like it almost has scratches on the surface of the paint rather than that crackle effect. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this crackle medium or if there's a better one out there because I really like that look, but I can't seem to figure out how to get this one to work. So I decided to decoupage over top of this instead using the skull napkin that I found at Walmart. 
I love how you can see hints of that purple paint coming through the napkin, even though this will mostly be covered up. All that's left to do now is decorate the candles. I used several items from Dollar Tree, including these purple flowers with the eyes in them, some spiders, skulls, blackberries, and oh, I painted the tea lights black as well. That's it for this one. I love how this turned out. It is so fun for Halloween. This one is probably my favorite from today. It turned out so cool. I'm taking two of these skeleton hands from the Dollar Tree and going to start cutting off the fingers at all of the joints. I got this idea from the crafty couple in one of their recent videos, although I'm making something different, but that was so genius to make these hands look more realistic. You do wanna make sure as you're cutting each piece to keep them grouped together. That way you know where each piece goes as you put them back on. I also cut the finger that should be the thumb off at the base, which is the same thing the crafty couple did in their video, just to angle it a little bit more and make it look like a thumb. Now I'm gonna attach all the finger pieces back together. I'm just using hot glue here. You wanna start curving each of the finger joints as you glue them back on. I want this to look like it's holding a crystal ball and curve the fingers to look realistic. There will be gaps on the back side of the hand because of the way we're gluing it back together, but I'm okay with that. It actually looks really cool in the end. Once I had the hands put back together, I took them out to my garage and I spray painted them with a few coats of white paint. Next, I'm taking some brown chalk paint and a sponge and covering the hands with this to get into all of those cracks. Then I wiped off the brown paint, leaving it in the cracks and making these hands look like they've been aged. I went back and forth with this a few times until I got the look I wanted. Now it's time for the crystal ball portion. I have this plastic snow globe from Dollar Tree that they put out around Christmas time and I wanna make it look a little smoky. So I took some black paint on a sponge dabber and very lightly dabbed it onto the inside, but I wish I would have used gray instead. Adding to the spooky Halloween theme, I want there to be something inside of the crystal ball. So I found these report covers at the Dollar Tree, which are clear and printed out a crow on my Cricut. I printed out two and mirrored one of the images so it would be backwards and then placed one on each side of the report cover. Then I put the crow inside the crystal ball and it looks like it is floating there. To cover the bottom of the crystal ball, I just added some of this green velvet ribbon. When I put it all together, the hands weren't quite working right, so I did cut the palms a little bit and then curved them at the bottom so the crystal ball would have something to sit on. And that's it for this one. Like I said, it is so cool. This project is so incredibly easy. I'm taking another plastic skull from Dollar Tree and using my hot knife to cut it directly in half. You could also use an X-Acto knife or a box cutter, either one would work. Then I spray painted each half with antique brass, giving them two coats, but you can use any color that fits your home decor.
Next, I took my dark wax to just bring out some of those details a little bit more and then wiped it back with a paper towel. These are gonna be bookends, so to make them stand up on their own, I'm taking these Dollar Tree domino pieces. I just sanded them down a little bit for a better adhesion with the glue, and you wanna make sure the skull is sitting how it would sit on a bookshelf before adding in that domino. I ended up adding it a little bit too far back at first, and you really want it to be where that jawline is so it sits correctly on the bookshelf. That's it for this one. Like I said, super easy and a subtle Halloween touch. This one is also incredibly easy. I found this candle at the Dollar Tree and thought it looked like a witch's cauldron. So to make it look like that, I'm taking some black paint with baking soda and put a pretty heavy amount of the baking soda into the paint. Then I added one coat of the paint, just painting it on normally. And for the second coat, I stippled it onto the candle for that really textured look. I also did this same effect to two glass candle tea light holders for a little set. I thought about adding white wax to bring out some of that texture and tried it on a little spot, but didn't like how that looked. So I ended up just leaving these black and that's it for this one. Check out this video next for more fall ideas and I'll see you next week.